Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Madison Charlton from MLC Tech and now today we have some more reports coming from AMD on their plans to continue support for the AM4 platform. Given that the AM4 platform is almost 8 years old, we were shocked at CES this year when it was unveiled that we were getting 4 new CPUs on this platform, that being the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D, the Ryzen 7 5700, the Ryzen 5 5600GT and the Ryzen 5 5500GT. But to further add to this, AMD has come out and said today that they will continue to support this platform for the foreseeable future. So sit back and relax as we dive into the continued support for the AIM4 platform. Now this news is coming directly out of the mouth of AMD technical marketing and quite frankly I was very surprised with the direction AMD is taking the AM4 platform to this day. But they did say that their support on the AM4 platform is dependent on one factor, on one factor alone and that is the pricing of DDR4 memory. And they said AMD will keep supporting the AM4 platform until the cost of producing older DDR4 memory becomes more expensive than DDR5. And then AMD also went on to say that for users migrating to AM5, that platform is designed for people who want to tee up for the future. Now we saw the same trend with DDR3 memory when DDR4 came out, though this was when manufacturers actually stopped supporting DDR3, the scarcity of that memory skyrocketed in price because well no one was buying it and no one was producing it in near enough volume, so that's why the prices skyrocketed. Whereas if AMD continues to provide active support for a platform that uses DDR4 memory, then that actually keeps the demand and need for DDR4 at a reasonable level, so it's going to actually extend the longevity of DDR4 until we see it skyrocket in price due to the scarcity and the unavailability of the memory as, like I said, no one's producing it in volume and no one's buying it in volume. Whereas if there are still platforms out there that support and use DDR4 and people are still buying new processors for this platform, then it's going to tee over the viability of DDR4 for the near future. But doesn't AMD want people to upgrade to the latest and greatest AM5 platform? Well, in short, they certainly do. But AMD wanted to make it clear that AM5 is for those with an eye on the future of hardware. Now, it's been well over a year since the launch of the Ryzen 7000 line of CPUs, which has been ample time for users to decide whether to upgrade or stick around with AM4. And while AM4 does post the latest memory technologies and PCI standards, such as DDR5 and PCI 5.0, and there are some great compelling reasons to, for some users to stick with AM4. This now includes even more ongoing support for this very platform. Which I think is great to see. Though personally I did make the move over to AM4 only last year. Where I upgraded to a 7950X 3D CPU. And that's an absolute crazy and brilliant processor. Though you do pay a pretty penny for the platform and the CPU itself. So I can see why not everyone wants to jump ship over to AM5 as it's more expensive, the motherboards are more expensive, the memory is more expensive, just everything about it is more expensive. Whereas the support for AM5 is tailored to those who are already on the platform and wish to upgrade their CPU without having to buy an entire new platform and upgrade every single aspect in the system. Because quite frankly, it's a lot of money and I understand and it's possible with the launch of AIM-5, it could have deterred some people as, let's just say, AIM-5 had a bit of a rocky start on its first launch. Now, a lot of these issues have been resolved, but first impressions can make a very big difference. For example, the relationship with its AGESA microcode and the DDR5 memory standard could be described as rocky at best. And there are also the SSC voltage issues and instability above specification frequencies and this was a problem that prevented users from pushing the limits of DDR5 capabilities which to be fair compared to other platforms such as Intel is a bit of an issue for example on my 7900X 3D the maximum speeds uh, the maximum memory frequencies I've been able to push on my RAM is 6000 megahertz though I've seen some reports that some people have been lucky and able to get a memory controller that can support higher frequencies Though on average from my personal use cases, as well as a lot of use cases I've researched on the internet, it usually kept at around 6,000 megahertz, so there are still some teething issues on DDR5 and AM5. So while AMD has made significant improvements to the AM5 platform, with manufacturers rolling out new microcode updates, and according to reports from AM5 users and overclockers, that this update has significantly improved 
stability to AIM-5's overall DDR5 compatibility and support. There is still more work that needs to be done on the AIM-5 platform as a whole to bring even better support to DDR5 and that is of the memory controller itself. That's one of its limiting factors. So it remains to be seen what future generations of AIM-5 have in store. But like I said earlier in the video, I'm super happy with my time and experience on AM5. Yes, more work needs to be done, but I'm super happy with my experiences so far. And AMD plans to then support AM5 for the next couple of years at very least. Then again, they did say this very same thing with AM4 and almost eight years later, they're still trying to support this platform, which I think is absolutely brilliant to see. And the longevity of AM4 itself was one of the biggest factors behind the success of AMD's Ryzen line of CPUs. And the fact that beyond 2024, they're still committed to bringing out more support for the AIM4 platform. This is really good to see as it widens the gap and accessibility for people to be able to upgrade the CPUs to more modern levels of performance. For example, if someone's still on first, second gen or even third gen Ryzen, they could potentially get a brand new CPU that comes out next year and they only need to upgrade the CPU itself. They don't need to get a new cooler. They don't need more RAM, a new motherboard or anything. It means upgrading your PC has never been easier and has never been so accessible. This means people can get up to speed on their CPU performance when it comes to the latest and greatest gaming titles without having to spend an absolute fortune to upgrade every single aspect of their computer as that would involve having to upgrade every single aspect of your PC. Like I said, we're going over to new DDR5 standards, which is even more money compared to DDR4, um, new motherboards, new CPUs, new everything. Whereas Continued support for AM4 is great to see as it means more people can game for longer without having to spend an absolute fortune. So we're not isolating PC buyers that are on lower budgets compared to people who are able to upgrade to the latest and greatest AM5 and latest Intel platforms. So I think this is a really great move from AMD. As the greatest thing about this industry, about the PC gaming hardware, is flexibility, versatility and also accessibility to all types of gamers and users to be able to just play games and explore the realm of PC gaming and computer hardware without having to sell an arm and a leg just to be able to get on the ladder. So yeah, I am super happy with the approach AMD has taken for longevity and continued support for their platform. Anyway, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on this topic in the comments down below. Are you someone who's still on AM4 and will be interested in upgrading to a future AM4 CPU? Or are you looking to move in to an entirely new platform, whether that be in the latest AM5 platform? Or are you eyeing up the potential leaks and rumours of Intel's latest platform? Let me know all of that in the comments down below, as I would love to know what you're thinking. Anyway, I have been Madison Charlton from MOC Tech. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked it in any way, shape or form, make sure to give this video a like and maybe subscribe for more content like this in the future. Anyway, thank you once again for watching today's video and I hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye for now.